Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about vectors, matrices and related stuff. And indeed, in today's part 53, we will start with a new topic in this series. It's one of my favorite topics in Linear Algebra and in fact a very important one. It's the discussion of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. However, you already know, before we start discussing the details, I really want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, here on YouTube, on Patreon or via PayPal. A really big thank you because you make this video course possible. And please don't forget, as a reward, you can download PDF versions, quizzes and exercises for all the videos with the link in the description. Ok, then without further ado, let's start explaining what a so-called eigenvalue is. And now it might not surprise you that I can explain to you that it comes from the German word Eigenwert. And now this attribute Eigen is also stuck in English now, but it simply means own or proper. And maybe you just can remember that an Eigenvalue just describes a very characteristic value for a matrix. Moreover, you should know, it's a relatively modern concept, so it's not so old. In fact, it dates back to 1904 and it was introduced by David Hilbert. And now with our knowledge of linear algebra, we can immediately understand what he did. Namely, we have to consider a square matrix A. So in general, we have an n times n matrix and we already know this corresponds to a linear map. As usual, we call this FA and it maps Rn into Rn. Hence, when we talk about eigenvalues, we also talk about linear transformations. And as always, these transformations can be visualized nicely in R2. So for example, we can observe what such a linear map does to a house. So the question is, how is this sketch of a house transformed? First, important to note is that the codomain is the same, so we land in R2 again. And second, please recall, a linear map can only stretch, rotate or reflect. So roughly speaking, we can say lines stay lines or they collapse to a point. However, it cannot happen that the line is now a curve on the right hand side. Indeed, the whole picture here is already given when we know what happens to the two vectors from the left. So you know, this is the big advantage of a linear map. You don't need a lot of information to get the whole map. Ok, and in our example here, you see the house is stretched in this way. And we see a lot of points from the house are shifted and moved. However, we also recognize that this one direction here is not rotated in any way, it's just scaled a little bit. And in fact, this is exactly the question we asked when we deal with eigenvalues and eigenvectors. More precisely, we ask, are there any vectors that are only scaled by our linear map FA? This means, by going from left to right, the direction of this vector does not change. And I can already tell you, these special vectors we will call eigenvectors. And indeed, we can already answer this question because we know how to deal with linear maps. Namely, FA just acts by the matrix vector multiplication. Hence, AX is the image of X under FA. And now we want that this image goes in the direction of X again. Hence, the only thing we can have is a scalar lambda in front of this X. And of course, scalar just means it could be any real number. In particular, this equation here means that the direction could also flip, namely when the scalar is negative. Moreover, in the case that the scalar is zero, we have that the direction collapses to the origin. However, this is also in the spirit of this question because we have only scaling involved. Ok, then I would say we are ready to simplify this equation. This means that we now bring everything to the left hand side. And then we can write a minus lambda times the identity matrix, which you know we just denote by a bold 1. So there we have a new matrix and we apply the vector x from the right hand side. And now this should be equal to the zero vector. 
So there you see, this is just rewriting this equation and introducing a new matrix to make it simpler. And in fact, I would say it's simpler because now we can say that the equation is just represented by the kernel of this matrix. So please recall, the kernel of a matrix just represents all the vectors that are sent to zero by the matrix. In other words, our original equation just means that x lies in the kernel of this new matrix. Okay, so now this is something you really should remember, because we will use it a lot for calculations later. And now you already know, this vector x in the equation is what we call an eigenvector of the matrix A. However, only if this vector is not the zero vector. This is easy to understand, because the zero vector always lies in the kernel. Or in other words, saying that the zero vector is only scaled is not interesting at all, because the zero vector is always sent to zero. Therefore, for eigenvectors, we will always exclude the zero vector. However, we don't do that for the scaling factors we now call eigenvalues. So you see, eigenvector and eigenvalue always come together. Moreover, you also see, if you find one eigenvector, you immediately have infinitely many. Simply because the kernel is always a whole subspace. Okay, now in order to get an idea what we actually calculate here, let's look at an example. Here, as before, let's look at a two-dimensional example, so we have a 2 times 2 matrix. And to get started, let's choose some easy numbers, so ones and zeros. And moreover, let's take the basic eigenvalue equation. So we multiply this matrix with a vector x1, x2, and we want to get out lambda times this vector. So what we get here are exactly two equations. The first one is x1 plus x2 is equal to lambda times x1. And the second one is simply x2 is equal to lambda times x2. So we see we have two equations but three unknowns. We want to find the two components and the scaling factor lambda. However, we also recognize this is not a linear system because we have the product of two unknowns here. Therefore, we have to do a little bit more before we can apply our linear solving algorithms. For example, we can immediately say that the second equation is satisfied if lambda is equal to 1. However, this one is also satisfied if we set x2 to 0. So we have two possibilities here and now we can check what the first equation says about it. In fact, in the second case here, the first equation would say that x1 is equal to lambda times x1. So also there, as before, we get two possibilities. So either lambda is equal to 1 or the first component vanishes. But now we see, in the second case here, we would have that both components are equal to 0. In other words, we would get out the 0 vector, which is not interesting at all to answer our eigenvalue equation. In conclusion, we get that the only possible eigenvalue will be lambda is equal to 1. And now this solution we can put into the first equation to get all possible eigenvectors. Namely, the first equation now reads x1 plus x2 is equal to x1, which means x2 has to be equal to 0. However, it also implies that x1 can be chosen as we want. So you see, no matter how we choose x1, this equation here is always satisfied. And with that, we can write down our whole solution of this eigenvalue equation. First, we have proven that this matrix A only has one eigenvalue and this one is given by the scaling factor 1. Moreover, the corresponding eigenvectors can be written as x1, 0. And there, x1 can be any real number, but not 0. So again, you know, we always have to exclude the zero vector from the eigenvectors. Okay, with that we have seen a very nice example and how a calculation could work. Of course, soon we will see that we have a more systematic way to calculate all the eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. But for an introduction into the topic, it's good to play a little bit with the two equations. 
Okay, and now to close this video today, let's write down the formal definition. So you already know, for the eigenvalue question, we need a square matrix. And the scalar factor we denote with lambda again. And now the definition reads, if we find a non-vanishing vector x, that satisfies the eigenvalue equation with a and lambda, then lambda is called an eigenvalue of the matrix A. Indeed, we could have a lot of different eigenvalues for one matrix A. The only thing we need is that the equation above is satisfied for a non-vanishing vector. And exactly this vector x is then called an eigenvector of A. And sometimes it can be important to say to which eigenvalue this eigenvector belongs. And please note, a given eigenvector can only correspond to one eigenvalue. Moreover, we have seen before that all eigenvectors together form a kernel. Namely, it's the kernel of A minus lambda times the identity matrix. Therefore, the subspace also gets a special name, it's called the eigenspace of A. Or more precisely, we would say it's the eigenspace of A associated to the eigenvalue lambda. However, now please note, in this eigenspace, the zero vector now is included. We do that because then we just deal with an ordinary subspace here. Okay, and now the last definition of this video is the set of all eigenvalues. So if we put all possible eigenvalues of a given matrix into a set, we also give it a name. In fact, it has a very nice name, it's called the spectrum of the matrix. So the notion spectrum of A is something you should put to the topic of eigenvalues. And here I can already tell you, in other parts of mathematics, this concept here can be generalized. Therefore, it's really important to understand this original definition for matrices. Okay, and now how we can work and how we can calculate with these notions, we will see in the next videos. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye. Go